Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. We're so glad to have those of you that are here with us today and those of those of you that are joining us online as well. Uh, we've had a, the home going of one of our dear, beloved men of the church on Saturday morning, stepped out of the presence of us and into the presence of the Lord. And Brother Doug Brewer and is in the presence of the Lord, rejoicing and enjoying his presence. And what a blessing it is to have ushered someone into the presence of the Lord and then to have a couple come to join the church and present themselves for church membership. Amen? Amen. And get baptized as well. You know, we're here today to witness the baptism of Sarah and Brett Wright. And uh, what, a, what a blessing it is to have this couple come. And, you know, I remember a while back where Sarah came and talked to me at the back, said, hey, we'd like to get married. And, and uh, you remember that, right? I do. <laughs> but I remember Sarah coming to my class at North Florida Christian School as well with Shelby in the, in the room down in the the uh, entrance down there. We've got the whole we got the whole crew just about the substitute over here as well. But uh, what a blessing it is to see Sarah grow and, and Rhett grow in the Lord, and and that baptism. What is baptism? Does baptism save you? No, not at all. Baptism is an outward show. It's the, one of the ordinances that God left us with. Jesus left us with, and. Uh, it's an outward show of what we profess inside in our lives. Saying, hey, I know the Lord is my Savior. I'm going to walk with Him in my life. So let me ask you a couple questions, Sarah. Have you asked Jesus Christ to be the Savior of your life? Yes. Do you believe that He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures? Yes. Do you believe that He's in heaven today? Yes. Well, based upon your profession of faith, I want to baptize you. My sister, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said what? Amen. Your preacher might be a little wet in this morning. Lex, I'm finding a couple of holes in this, these, pipe, these, these uh, bridges here. I'm using Lex's uh, hip waders. But, uh, Rhett. Rhett. <laughs> now, I, your, your father-in-law asked me to keep you underwater a little longer. Yeah, five That's seconds. Five seconds longer. I didn't ask your, your mother-in-law, but she didn't say anything, so I didn't ask for that. But, uh, you know, I'm excited to have you here. And we are thrilled to have you present yourselves for membership here at Calvary Baptist Church. And that, Rhett, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Yes. Do you believe that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures? Yes. Do you believe that he's in heaven today? I do. Are you willing to walk with him and serve him in your life? Yes, I am. Well, based upon your profession of faith, my brother, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All God's people said, Amen. Amen. You, can, you can pull the, you can pull the shades.
You may be seated. You thought I was going to come out looking wet, didn't you? I did too. But anyways, we're so glad to have you all here. And after the service this morning, we will have Sarah and Rhett right come down front and we'll give them the, the right hand of fellowship because they presented themselves for church membership and we'll vote them in there. Amen? Amen. What a blessing that is. All right. Listen, uh, I want to thank you for your faith promise commitments and those of you that are, are giving towards the, uh, the campground there in the Philippines. Uh, uh, some people are mailing in gifts to go to that, and what a blessing that is. Um, Francisco uh, texted us and sent us some, some information. There was a, a fire uh, that was down there. Some of you have already seen that. How many of you have seen that on Facebook or some of the other, there was a fire that was there, and uh, some of the juniors that had been coming to church lost their homes and things of that nature. So I, I'm not sure of all the extent if a, a church or something was, was hit by it, but let's just pray for Francisco and, and uh, the needs that are there in the Philippines at this time as well. In your bulletins, you have a f family food fellowship uh, slip and uh, for this upcoming, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. Is that correct? That is correct. 
Okay. Now that night, we are going to have Jeffrey and Sydney Bassford with us. They don't know it's a family food fellowship night, but we will start at 6.30 in the annex, and they're going to have uh, some time to talk to us. And then we'll sit down and we'll eat together, and you get a chance to interact with them. They are heading back to the Amazon October 1st. Okay, so this is the only time we get to see them again. So they will be here that Wednesday night, a week from this coming Wednesday night, and they'll be heading back to the Amazon. So uh, listen, we'd love to be an encouragement to them as well. This week, uh, Tuesday, we've got uh, the Men's Community Prayer Breakfast at Cracker Barrel. And I believe, Brother Bill, you're, you're speaking, correct? And uh, Brother Bill will be speaking on Tuesday. Next Sunday, we've got the Lord's Supper. We're going to uh, celebrate and uh, we're, then a couple Sundays, we've got the CPP training and our business meeting as well coming up. So lots of little things taking place in that. Make sure that you, as I shared earlier, you know, pray for the Brewer family and the loss of, of Doug. And uh, we're just glad to have you guys with us. I'm going to ask the men to come forward for the morning gifts of tithes and offerings this morning. And... Uh, Brother Wayne, why don't you grab the microphone and, and pray and bless the, uh, the gifts that are coming. My gracious name, the Father, we come to you this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise for all the many blessings you bestow upon us. Lord, we just thank you for the wonderful rain we've had this past week, Lord, and replenish our, our, our crops and our land. Lord, we just thank you so much for that. We just thank you, Father, for the life of Brother Doug Brewer's well, Lord, we, we know that uh, he's in your presence at this time, Lord, and we just uh, uh, praise you for that, Lord. And we just uh, ask you to just be with uh, Deb and, and Kaysen now as they uh, go forward, Lord. We just get, ask you to just give them peace and, and grace in the days of head. Lord, we just thank you for Sarah and, and Red as they've come this morning, Lord, and, and baptism, Lord. We just thank you for their commitment, Lord, to your, your service and, and, uh, and the, the Calvary Baptist Church. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you just uh, be with all our, our folks this morning, Lord. We just thank you for this uh, crowd we've got this morning. Lord, we just ask that you just uh, be with our service, be the Rob as he speaks to us. We just thank you, Lord, for our Sunday school hour, Lord, and, and we just praise you for that. Now for this offering we're about to receive, Lord, we just ask that you just take it and bless it and use it for only going to your kingdom in Christ's sake. Amen. I don't know if you know that song, but the chorus goes, Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. What a beautiful message. What a beautiful message. Miss Sherry, come on down. Yeah, you're so lucky. Okay, now what we are doing 
is we are showing unity. We are in one circle and we are one now, one circle. Now let your hands go. So our circle is made up of individuals, individuals that are good at different things. I've noticed you've been in the choir lately because you are good in the choir. And I've noticed that you are just such a good listener and you've got manners that you would not, like that are wonderful. Your mom and your dad have taught you such wonderful manners and that is a good thing. And this boy right here is getting taller and taller and taller and I bet you're good at basketball, aren't you? Are you good at basketball? Or any of those sports, huh? He is good at soccer. And soccer too? He's good at soccer. He's very good at soccer. Okay, very good at soccer. Fantastic. All of our individual gifts are wonderful, but God wants us to be one. He talks about being one a lot. And let's talk about how we can all be one. We can be one as a group of Christians by praying together. We can be one by worshiping together and celebrating together. Now, let's hold hands again. All right, now, I want you to look to your left. I'm looking at Dylan, you're looking at, okay, now, this is your left. You look at Braylon, Braylon, you're looking at me. Okay, now, look to your right. Okay, there, now we're looking at me. All right, God wants you to look after people that are in this unified circle, okay? So I was looking at you, I need to help look after you, and if you have problems, I need to comfort and support you, and the same thing with Braylon. I need to be looking after him, because that's part of being unified and being one. There is a scripture in the Bible that talks a lot about being one, and if you'll notice, it's highlighted. Every time it said one, I highlighted it. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them. Okay, so the glory, this is Jesus talking. So the glory that God gave Jesus, I'm giving them. Them is all of us. That they may be one, all of us, as one, even as we are one. I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou hast loved me. John 17, 22, 23. Now somebody wrote a song about this verse, and this is how it goes. Ready? I'm going to sing it. We are one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. We have joined our spirit with the spirit of God. We are one in the bond of love. We have found this love here at this church and we're bonded together. We're unified and we're helping others. And what's supposed to happen is people are supposed to see that love and see our bond and want to join it too. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to be united in Jesus so others can see your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. back on the board the only problem is the numbers are not as good as I thought they were going to be so uh, I'm hoping that the numbers will get better and not just for the sake of the numbers but for the sake of our lives and our connection to the church uh, if you want to get connected to the church you need to come to these small groups of Sunday school to get connected you know um, we have probably 80 people in here and we only have half of those people that are coming to our Sunday school so that's not a good that's only like 50 percent i think but so that's not good I, um so if you are wondering what class i should be in or where i should be or where my children should be we have a class now for every age group so uh we have dedicated teachers that are committed to teaching the, the sunday school lessons so come on out and support them uh, not for the sake of the numbers but for the sake of our, our of our unity and connection to the church um and also, the money that's being raised in the Sunday school hour, the 4884, I believe is the number we had today, 
we are sending that money to the campground. So uh, I think last week we had something like somewhere somewhere in that same number. So we're we're progressing well with the campground through our Sunday school as well. So a good a good support there, good effort there. So I just challenge you to come out to our Sunday school. Let's look at our next song now. Open our eyes. Let's stand the same place. <clears throat> may be seated. Beautiful singing. I want you to think about this morning. How did you come to trust Christ as your Savior? I remember as a young person, you know, I, my mom and dad raised us in a, a, a Christ-centered home. And I don't remember too much about the early years, but I remember going to church. And that I remember wondering if I was saved. And I remember in high school, and my son will know where this is, my wife will, and, and Lauren, room 306 at, at, at the academy, at, in the college there. Um, we had special speakers that would come in. And I had been wrestling. I sit in the second row, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take care of this. And I trusted Christ as my Savior. I didn't want to doubt anymore. Folks, you know, when you come and you trust Christ as your Savior, that is a special moment in your life. That's a good spot to say amen. Brother Doug would have said amen twice by now. So you guys have to get with it, all right? All right. Um, yes, it's a special time in your life because as a, as, a, as a believer, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you at that moment. We, we are given tremendous gifts by that simple act of trusting Christ as our Savior. But then, it goes on from there. You, you begin to learn and grow in Christ. You begin to learn, to, more, to learn more about Jesus Christ and about what He's done for you and the blessings that He's bestowed on your life. In Acts chapter 19, take your Bibles there, in Acts chapter 19, we have this interesting passage. The book of Acts is a transitional book. We remember in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. The Lord said, you tarry here. They have trusted in God's finished work, His gift on the cross. And then the Holy Spirit filled them. Today, when we trust Christ as our Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells us immediately. And what a blessing that is. Acts chapter 19, verses 1-10, through 10, it says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. This is Paul's third missionary journey he's setting out on, okay? In verse, chapter 19, verse number 2, he found... In verse 1, he found certain disciples and he came to them having re and asked them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, they're like scratching their heads, we, we, we have not heard as much as whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what will you baptize? And they said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, I'm going to say, when they heard the Gospel and what Jesus had done on the cross, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading things concerning the kingdom of God. And when many, when diverse were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way for the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. You know, this passage is very interesting uh, as, it, as it charts Paul's journey, his third missionary journey. And he comes to Ephesus and he finds this group of people. Now, I don't know where he found them, whether they were at church in the synagogue or where he was out ministering and witnessing. But uh, he started, his passion was to see people come to Christ. Folks, that's what Paul's ministry was, to share the gospel, to spread the gospel, to see people's lives changed for Christ. And as he did this in city by city, he saw them grow in Christ. Folks, this this man set out on a mission to fulfill the mission that God had laid upon him. The, the, commission, the great commission, alright? Go ye into what? All the world and preach the gospel. The, the commission that Jesus left for all of us to do. And Paul went out and he did this. And in our passage today, in this simple passage, this interesting passage, we see what Paul did to see God's work grow around him. What did he do? First of all, what he did, if we want to see God's work grow, we need to bring people to Christ. We have to be reaching others for Christ. Paul was traveling. He comes to the city Ephesus and he comes across these 12 men and he saw something was off in them. Have you ever met somebody where something just wasn't all there? Everybody, you all met somebody like that? Raise your hands. Don't look at them, okay? Don't look at them, all right? Please don't, don't. You, you just looked at them. You did. Crystal just looked at them. Oh, my word. Okay? Listen, folks. Paul met these 12 men, and he could sense that there was something different about them. What were they? They were disciples of John the Baptist. Now, understand this. The book of Acts is transitional. They didn't have a cell phone where something happens in the Middle East and you know about it right now on your phone. Okay? They were disciples of John the Baptist. They had heard John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. And they believed his message. All right? And so they're traveling around and they're sharing. The message of John the Baptist. Because they haven't heard that the Messiah had come already. And that Jesus had died on the cross, had been risen, and was ascended into heaven, and had given us the gift of the Holy Spirit and all the blessings that go with it. And so what did Paul do? He sat down and he asked these men this question and then he shared with them the Gospel. Hey, Yes, John did tell us to look forward to the one that would come after him. John told us all about this, but you know what? Jesus came. He came. And he, he, he died on the cross. And three days later, he rose from the grave. And there was witnessed. We saw him for 40 days. And he shares this with them. And what did they do? They believed. They believed in what Jesus had done. And they said, we need to be baptized. Just kind of like Sarah and Rhett were baptized. They were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, this account is kind of interesting. These 12 men that were apart and they were believers, there's some disagreement among commentators. Were, Were these people saved or were they not? When did the Holy Spirit come into their life? Well, obviously in the passage it tells us there it came in, He came into their life after 
they had trusted Christ. But folks, what about the people that were living on earth looking towards the cross and the promise? Were they saved? Yes. I believe that these folks were, were saved. They were trusting in, in the work of Christ, the, the future work of Christ. They had not heard yet. They were looking towards the promise. And now upon hearing about the promise, they trusted in the finished work of Jesus Christ. But yet, when Paul met them, he knew that something was missing in them. He saw it in their life. What was Paul doing? He was searching for people to trust Christ, was he not? He was walking. He was working. He was, he was out interacting with the individuals. It says later in the uh, later verse there, he was in the synagogue talking to people as his custom was. He was searching for people to trust Christ as their Savior. And he was watching. He was asking questions. I shared this with my cl our class this morning. There was a young man named James that was the godson of a, our neighbor. And he was visiting on Monday evening sometime. And uh, they came over, and Mike came over, and, and uh, asked him some questions. We were talking, interacting. He's in the Marine Corps. And uh, so we were talking, and this he's introduced this young man, James, that is God's son. I'd seen him around once or twice before. And so we started talking. I said, oh, you know, what, what's your plans? And he's going to go into the military. Okay, good. You know, he's going to the Air Force, and we started talking. And, and uh, he asked, do you go to church anywhere? And he said, well, I go to Primitive Baptist Church down in, you know, Sop Choppy area down that, that way. And so I asked him the question. Well, James, if you were to die today, where would you spend eternity? And he just looked at me. He said, I, I don't know. And so I proceeded to share the Gospel with him. You know, folks, as you go out, as you head out on your, your, your job, as you go to the stores, as you go to this place or that place, if you know Christ as your Savior, you're supposed to be doing exactly what Paul did. We're supposed to be looking for people to share the Gospel with. God brings people across your path every day. People that are carrying burdens. People that are, are just weighted down with things. People that are looking to the, to the news and to what's happening in the world today as if it's, everything is, is hanging on a thread. And you have a reason of hope within you that you can share. Paul says we need to be ready always to give an answer because of the reason the hope that lies within us we need to be able to share folks that's asking questions that's listening that's going through doors that are open that God presents to us folks listen if we want to see God's work if we want to see God's work grow if we want to see God's work grow here in Calvary and wherever you are at you have to be searching and looking for folks to trust Christ as their Savior. Just as Paul did. All right? He purposefully sought people for Christ. And he, he, he reached out. These 12 individuals, now, as Luke uh, 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 puts it in Scripture here for us, Today, he says, now their hope was not just in the hope of the Messiah, their, uh, their hope was in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And what a tremendous blessing that was. Paul was actively looking for those who needed Christ in their life. And that's what we need to be doing. If, if you step out on life's journey tomorrow, this afternoon, today, and the last thing you think about is what Christ would have you to do, then maybe we have to step back and change our focus. Amen? Doug would have amened by now. Amen? Yes! We need to. 
We need to change our focus. We need to see the people around us as Jesus did. What did he? Scripture says he looked up his eyes and saw the people, the multitudes were following him as sheep without what? A shepherd. Somebody to guide them and to lead them. Secondly, we see in our passage here, if we desire to see God's work grow, we have to be submitted to the Holy Spirit. This is an amazing thing here. These 12 men were missing the Holy Spirit in their life. And that opens a great question. Are there people in churches today that are missing the Holy Spirit in their life? And I would say yes. There are people in churches today that, that have never trusted Christ as their Savior, and so they're missing the Holy Spirit in their life. Now, on the flip side, there are, there are believers today in the church today that are, know Christ as their Savior that are missing the Spirit in their life as well. And I think this gives us a great illustration here. You see, folks... God's Word tells us in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20, He says, listen, He's talking about the, the fruits that come forth on a tree. We've got this orange tree in our backyard and there's nothing growing on it this year. I don't know why. Okay? It's an orange tree. Satsuma tree, but there's nothing growing on it. Alright? So maybe somebody can explain to me why that is this year. I don't know. Alright? But... You would know that tree is a satsuma tree, if I'm saying that right, Joyce, okay, all right, because of the fruit that grows on it. Now, how many of you have satsuma trees in your yards? Raise your hand, okay? You, you know it's not an apple tree, all right? Listen, you know it by their fruits, and that's exactly what we do as a believer. You see the fruit in people's lives. Paul looked at these men and something was missing. There, there, were, there was the spiritual growth was not evident. And in Galatians chapter 5, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, which is what? Come on, we say this a lot. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness. Yes, those verses in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, and, and that whole passage that talks about the fruit of the Spirit in their life. You see. After these men believed and were baptized and Paul laid their hands on them, they, the Holy Spirit indwelt them. This was kind of like a mini Pentecost because of the 12 that were there, all right? And you, you have the, the Pentecost in the book of Acts, the Jer Jerusalem believers. Then you have the Samaritans through Philip and you have the Gentiles by Peter and here to the Jews through Paul. And as you can see, from this point on, that God's Word went and spread through all the area. What happened to them? When they, when they trusted Christ as their Savior, when they were baptized and the Holy Spirit came, it was seen in their life. Verse number 6 tells us, they spoke in tongues. Well, what is that? All right, The Greek word for tongues is, literally means languages. Ooh, eyes, I, ama at the usi. Do you know what that is? Agu, agape, su. That's Greek. That's about all I can tell you, okay? Speak it out there, all right? Uh, ooh, agu, agape, su. I love you, okay? That's what that's worth. You know, when Jeffrey and Sydney come, they can speak another language. And, you know, I can try to speak Spanish, all right? But I can't. All right, Freda can speak some dialects of Filipino. I don't Filipino, right? Language, right? Yes, that's right. All right, she can speak that. I couldn't tell you what she would say. All right, you can't either, brother. All right, not at all, folks. Listen, these folks, these these believers were given the gift to speak a language. Now, I have, I have a hard time learning English. How many of you struggled at English? All right. You know, my, my English papers looked like it. You know, I thought the teacher ran through their red pen on purpose on my part. They ran out. On the, every time they went through it, it was, it, was, it was like marked up and everything. I couldn't believe it. All right? But in Acts chapter 2, and in Acts chapter verses 1 through 4, and verse 11, 
It talks about when the gift of the Holy Spirit came and these folks were able to speak in languages. Okay, They called it tongues at that point. And it says here in Acts chapter 2, the, the people said, we hear them speak in our own language. These folks were given, these 12 men were given the gift of speaking in different languages. And it was a gift to them because of the Holy Spirit in their life. And it spread the Gospel. You see, these acts in their life were a result of the Holy Spirit at work in them. Did you catch that? These things that they did were a result of the, the Holy Spirit working in them. As a believer, we have to learn to walk in the Spirit's power. What does this mean? By submitting to Him. By yielding to Him. By following God's Word and His prompting in our heart. You see, at the moment of salvation, everyone, every believer, if you've trusted Christ as your Savior, you have the Holy Spirit living within you. Amen? Okay. We've got that established there. We've got Scripture that backs that up. All right? In, in God's Word. But, walking in the Spirit's power is not an automatic process. Did you catch that? Walking in the Spirit's power, yielding to the Holy Spirit, is not something that just automatically happens in your life. You see, that's why Paul commanded us to walk in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. He says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you'll not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And later on, he says, we're supposed to allow ourselves to be filled with the Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 5, he says, but feel, be filled with the Spirit. You see, folks, there are believers today whose daily lives are characterized by the deeds of the flesh. and not the fruit of the Spirit. Do you catch that? There are folks that have trusted Christ as their Savior whose lives reflect the deeds and the, the works of the flesh. And Galatians talks about what those are. Anger, wrath, malice. And not the works of the, of the Holy Spirit. You see... Should we be able to see the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life? Should you be able to see the results of the Holy Spirit in your life if you've trusted Christ? Yes! That's what ought to characterize us. That's what, what ought to be there in our life. Okay? And the question we would ask ourselves... Do people see the evidence of Christ in us and in you? If we want to see God's work grow, we have to submit to the Holy Spirit daily in our lives. We have to yield to Him. Make it your priority to walk daily submitted to the Spirit's power. As you do this, He's going to guide and direct your words and your actions. Then lastly, we see in our passage, if you want to see God's work grow, you have to train those that are entrusted to your care. Paul, in verses 8-10 through 10 in our passage here, he ran into some stiff opposition in the synagogue, people that were, were, were dug in into the law of Moses and they had nothing to do with Jesus Christ being the Messiah. And he ran into the stiff opposition and so he took the folks that were with him and they, they went and they went to a, a, the school of Tyrannus. Now, I don't know anybody named by Tyrannus. Do you? I don't. You know, I can imagine maybe a parent being upset and then naming their kid Tyrant, okay, and Tyrannus, I, I guess, all right. But 
I would think, we, we, don't, we don't know if his name was Tyrus or Tyrant, but he had a school, all right? And so maybe this was a nickname given to their teacher by the students, all right? You know, how many of you gave your teachers a nickname? Raise your hand. Alex got it. Oh, we got a couple on here. Yeah, all right. This is probably what it was, okay? And so this school of Tyrannus in the morning would meet, and then Paul, in the heat of the day, he would gather the folks together, and they would go into this school, into this building, in the heat of the day, and learn about Christ. Amazing. I want you to stop and think about how have you learned about Christ. And how you've learned about God's Word and how to apply it to your life and how to grow in God's Word. Paul was teaching and he was training individuals that had come to Christ. Folks, listen. I hope that you are growing in Christ. I hope that you are growing in Christ. You know, to grow, you know, if you look at most people, some people grow this way, some are growing this way, and some are growing other ways, and all, and some are even starting to shrink a little bit too. I found that out. As you get older, you shrink. All right. You know, Johnny was six foot six at one time in his life. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, Johnny. No. Listen, you ought to be growing. In Christ. I hope that you're growing in Christ. I hope that you're learning. It says here in this passage here, as a result of what Paul did, as a result of him teaching and training others. In Acts chapter 19, verse 10, it says, So that all that dwelt in Asia heard of the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. He said, Everybody heard. That's amazing. Can you think about teaching? those around you, that God has entrusted to your care such that they go and share with others and they hear about Christ? That's exciting, is it not? Amen? That's what we ought to be doing. That's what we should be doing here at Calvary. Teaching and training those on Wednesday night, on Sunday morning. That's what Lex was talking about, Sunday school times. You know, it's a small group time. What a blessing to teach and to train and to see people grow in Christ. Paul talks about establishing churches that are sound in the doctrine of God's Word. Folks, if, if you don't know God's Word, it's going to be easy for somebody to come along and lead you astray. We'll just say that, you know what? We're not supposed to cast all our cares on Christ. Most of them, all right? You need to know the Scripture and say, no, that's wrong. We're supposed to do what? Casting all our care. He's with us always. We need to know God's Word. We need to apply it to our lives. We have to devote ourselves to learning about God's Word and growing. Interesting passage, as I said. But there's some great application. We're going to make some application this morning. You say, well, Brother Rob, you've been doing that all, all the time. Well, let's just bring the screws down a little bit more. Folks, listen. How can we continue to do God's work like Paul did? We need to bring people to Christ. Amen? We need to bring people to Christ. You know, what are you actively doing to bring people to Christ daily? That's what he's going to ask us. What do, what are you using my talents for that I gave you? What are, what are you doing with the gifts that I've given to you? What are you doing with the abilities to work here, to do this that I've given to you? What are you using those gifts for? Folks, listen, we need to bring people to Christ. Paul sought people out. He made observation. He asked questions. And he looked for opportunities to share the gospel. Folks, you say, well, hey, I'm not a preacher. I don't even know what to say. Ask somebody. Go with somebody. Listen. You know, as I shared with James on Monday night, later on, our neighbor Mike, who knows the Lord as a Savior, he came up to me. I said, Mike, I hope I didn't embarrass you or anything or jump. He says, no. I was just amazed 
that you felt so free to share God's Word like that. Folks, listen, we need to reach out to people around us. We need to bring others to Christ. We, we might not see the results of that, but we can plant, we can water, and we can help foster that growth in a person's life. Amen? We need to be seeking. Sit, sit and think about your life. Are you letting your light shine before men that they may see the good works in your life? Matthew 5, 16, and glorify Father, the Father which is in heaven. Are you letting God use your life? If all of us actively did our part, if every one of us did our part, and I think about the, the church in the book of Acts and how thousands were coming to Christ and people were by, the droves were coming through the door. Why is that? Because one or two people were on fire for the Lord, right? No. Because they all were. Did you catch that? They all were. They were all doing their part to share the gospel. Are you doing your part to share God's Word? Like Paul. Like these individuals. And when they did this, those that were learning, the, those that trusted Christ, when they, they went all in, everybody in Asia heard the Gospel. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! What a blessing that is! Let me ask you this. Can you do more to bring people to Christ? What would you say? Yes. Can we pick up people? Can we invite folks out? Can we go get them? Can we, can we minister by helping do things with the kids and, and seeing others that are hurting in their lives and being an opportunity, using that opportunity to, to minister to them? Yes. We can all do more. The second point of application is this. If we want to see God's work grow, we need to be we need to be yielded to the Holy Spirit in our life daily. Daily. Moment by moment. Hour by hour in our life. Let me ask you this. Are you yielding to the Holy Spirit in your life? If you know Christ as your Savior, are those fruits of the Spirit evident in what you do? In what you say? And how you react to the folks around you. I'm not saying are you perfect. No. But is it evident in your life? If not, we need to step back and say, do I know Christ as my Savior? If I know, if I know Christ as my Savior, then what is holding me back from allowing this to be, to be seen in my life? God's Word commands us to be filled with the Spirit. And we are to walk in the Spirit. To do this, you have to hide God's Word in your heart. You have to memorize it. You need to read it. You need to apply it to your life and allow it to change in our world. As a believer, I think that a lot of us are kind of scared to go deeper with Christ. We get comfortable. Go to church. Spend a little time in God's Word here or there. And we, we get to live our life just where we're at. And we, we're just shallow. Go deeper. Go deeper for Christ. Don't sell out short. Go all in. Lord, here's my life. Take it. Use it. I'm going to yield my will to You today. Take me as I go to this job or to that job. Help me to be a blessing. Lord, just fill me. Think about Scripture. Get into God's Word. Read it. Apply it to your life and go and do. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Take control of you in your life. That's the key to seeing God's work grow. The Holy Spirit's there. We just have to yield to Him in our life. 
the last truth that we can see here. We need to be teaching others. We need to be training those behind us. Your kids, your grandkids, your great-grandchildren, the, the folks that are entrusted to your care. We're supposed to be teaching and training them. If we're not fully yielded to the Holy Spirit in our life, how can we teach and how can we train effectively for Christ? Paul did. And what happened? Asia. Everyone in Asia heard the gospel. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Father, oh, that folks here today that know the Lord as their Savior would say, Lord, I, I just want to be known by the fruits of the Spirit in my life. I want to be characterized by that, not the works of the flesh. What about you this morning, folks? Are, are you willing to surrender those things that are a battleground in your heart? Are you willing to surrender those to God? Are you willing to say, Lord, here's my life. It's yours to use. Until you do, you will never see the full impact of God's work in your life and how He can use you. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Well, the Rob, I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. I've doubted it. I just, I don't know. God's Word tells us that we can know where we're going to spend eternity. We can accept His gift of salvation by faith. If you're here this morning and you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that, that, that you would take that step of faith today in your life. If you're here and you've never trusted Christ, would you just slip your hand up? It doesn't have to go high. Just, I'll see it. I will have somebody show you from God's Word how you can know Christ as your Savior. Anybody? Believers, can you do more? Can I do more? Yes. We can do more for Christ. We can do our part faithfully. Father, I know hearts are touched. The finger of the Holy Spirit is active today, drilling down on hearts. And as the song says, all to Jesus I surrender. I would hope that's our prayer this morning, that we surrender those things to You. With heads bowed and eyes closed, let's stand together. I'm going to ask the instrumentalist to play. If God's worked on your heart, you come as they play. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Are you doing what you can for Christ? Is there more? What, God, what is God asking you to do? Maybe it's a step of faith. I don't know. I urge you to yield that to Christ. I urge you.
Let's sing that hymn of invitation. One, one song, one chord. Here we go. All to Jesus. I hope that if you haven't, that you will find a place where you get alone and you surrender and go all in for the Lord. Because it's exciting to see what God can do in and through you. Amen? And what a blessing that is. I'm going to ask Sarah and Rhett Wright to come on down. All right. We want to make a motion that we accept them as members here at Calvary Baptist Church. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Look at that. Your dad, your father in law didn't even say no. <laughs> Amen. What a blessing that is. We want you to come by and give him the right hand of fellowship. I'm going to ask Lex. Lex, can you close us in prayer this morning? Especially them today, Lord, that you would bless them today, Lord, and all of their life and lift them up, Lord. Help us to be a, 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 a conduit for them to continue to serve, Lord, and serve not only here in church, but wherever they go. We pray, Lord, that you'd be with them in a special way. And we just pray for all of our folks that are here today, the, even visitors, Lord. We pray that you'd just be with them and, and thank you for sending them our way and bless them, Lord, in their travels and different directions that they go. And um, we just lift up our, all those in the Brewer family as well that you'd be with them through this time, Lord, and just bless them in everything they do. In Jesus' name, amen.